Hi and welcome back. Well, we're going to get out of the capital Nairobi, as you see, and out into the safari and the parks there. As I mentioned before, Nairobi has about 4 million people, and Kenya itself is a devoutly Christian country. 83% of its population count themselves as Christian, whether that be Protestant or Catholic, but there's a large emerging 11% of people who are Muslim. When we get out of the city and into the countryside, as you can see, we have Mount Kenya. The country's actually named after it. And we're going to get out into the wilds and see some of the animals and the wildlife. It's going to be an incredible adventure. Let's continue on our journey, on Jason's journey. Let's get back into Kenya, shall we? So when you left us, we were uh, negotiating at the front gate, making our way into the Masai Mara National Park to see what it has in store. Let's get inside. So here we are in the Maasai Mara. Now Maasai, we say to the people who are the locals that we've met earlier, you know, in the show, Mara means spotted bushes. So it just means the spotted bushes of the Maasai. And again, we're on our bumpy road, so I apologise. Remember, bumpy roads, that's how you get inside the Maasai Mara. Let's see how we get on. When you come to the Maasai Mara, it's not all just about seeing the big cats. Those cats have to feed on something. So also you'll come across large numbers of gazelle, zebras, warthogs, not to mention the most important factor for food here, the gigantic wildebeest migration that takes place every year from Tanzania through to Kenya with some two million wildebeest taking part. Okay, so we're here and we're seeing some of the wildebeest. Now every July and August we have the wildebeest migration where one and a half million of them cross overland during the water season. Uh, now when the rainy season does occur, the problem is a lot of them die and of course get attacked because this is basically the T-bone stake of the Serengeti and Masai Mara. Uh, we've got a few of them behind us here and we've seen a few dead ones being picked by vultures but uh, they are the mainstay of the Serengeti and the Masai Mara when they come here. Watching a wildebeest being taken down in the wild will take your breath away. I can't show you too much graphic nature obviously, but it was an incredible experience to watch and I really got to learn a lot about, well, shall we say, the circle of life. It was incredible to see but really shocking at the same time. That's life people. When originally established in 1948 as a wildlife sanctuary, the Masai Mara area covered only 520 square kilometres. This area was extended in the east in 1961 to cover four times that area. Although of course it's had recent additions, in 1976 the park was actually reduced to 1,510 square kilometres. Okay, so when you come here on safari, it's funny how there's all these different levels of people who are hunting other people. We just saw the lion that hunted the wildebeest. Then we've got us and all the tourists who are hunting the lion hunting the wildebeest. Now, if you go off-road, the rangers have big fines for people who get too close to the animals. So then we have the rangers hunting the tourists who are hunting the uh, lions who are hunting the wildebeest. So there's kind of this world within a world microcosm of uh, hunting that goes on here. So be careful that you don't get hunted by the rangers and have to pay a fine. Do the right thing. 
Its sizes remain constant since then, but when you consider that it also covers the Serengeti in Tanzania, the total square area is something closer to the vicinity of 25,000 square kilometres. It's bounded by the Serengeti Park to the south, which we're going to see in next week's episode, and continues on to the north, east and west. Rainfall amongst its southeast and northwest gradients provides drinking fluid for all the animals in the system, and there are major rivers draining the reserve. Shrubs and trees, as you can see, grow just about everywhere and cover the hill slopes and hilltops, so there's always somewhere cool for the animals to rest in the African heat. So what are the Big Five? Well now that I've woken up a bit I can tell you that the Big Five consists of lions, leopards, African elephants, African buffalo and black rhinoceroses, all of which are found in the Masai Mara area. Just as I thought I'd seen it all, a herd of elephants came trumbling straight towards us. They came literally straight up to the van, checking us out before continuing on their merry way, babies in tow. Having such wild and big animals so close to you was just an incredible experience I won't forget and it really took my breath away. So as the afternoon shadows began to draw upon us, I began to think about the role that each of these animals play in a complicated ecosystem. Whether they're at the bottom of the food chain, the top of the food chain, or somewhere in between, they all play a vital role in sustaining this important environmental area. But after such a long and rewarding day watching these animals in their natural habitat, I decided to pick up my cue from one of the animals in particular who seemed ready to get down and have a sleep, which seemed like a good idea to me as well. So we jumped inside our van for the rickety and yes again bumpy road back to where we were staying in the Maasai camp, ready to do it all again the next day. But you won't be seeing that until the next episode of Jason's Journeys. Join us next week when we finish off our African safari adventure and then make our way into Tanzania where we attempt to head up Mount Kilimanjaro for what's an exhausting but rewarding experience. I'll see you next week everyone, don't miss it! And remember, the journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. I'm Jason Ross everyone for Jason's Journeys, check your TV guides and I'll see you next time. Bye for now!